All right, guys, so in this video, I wanted to show you a few sort of quick tips and tricks that I use uh, almost every day uh, when I'm working you know, on post-production side of things uh, to kind of just basically make your videos look better. Now, just a side note, uh, what I'm gonna show you can be done in pretty much any editing software these days. Uh, but if you're a you know, self-respecting filmmaker, you're gonna be uh, using DaVinci Resolve, like I'll be using. Uh, because you can do it better, quicker, and faster, and then you can do it in some of the other programs. Uh, so if you want to follow along with me exactly, then uh, you can even get yourself a free uh, version of Resolve and just download it right now and start using it. Now, a couple things that uh, you don't have to get, but uh, I would suggest you get. Uh, something like this, basically a control surface that's gonna let you color grade them, basically work a little bit more fluidly and, and quicker. You can get like something like this one. Here's another one that I like using also. Uh, from Ripple, the Ripple Wave. Now in this tutorial, I'm gonna try to not use this too much so you guys can see actually where I go with the mouse and what I'm adjusting. But again, keep in mind you can do, basically what I'm gonna show you a lot quicker with one of these surfaces and I think it's a lot more intuitive. Definitely another thing you wanna get is a really good color grading monitor. Um, you know, something that's gonna show you the true colors uh, and just the dynamic range and everything of your final image. Uh, BenQ uh, SW monitor is one of the ones that I reviewed before. Great one. A new monitor I started using on my second editing station is the uh, Asus Pro Art series monitors. If you want more info, you guys can check out the videos where I talk about those two monitors. Now, once you get a really good color grading monitor, uh, definitely get yourself something like this. Uh, there's a few other tools out there uh, because you really want to make sure that your color calibration is up to date on, on your display. Now again, do you really have to get all the things that I'm showing you guys up here? I mean, I, I guess you don't have to get it, but then again, it's like saying you don't need a donut when you're editing uh, for many hours on end. And uh, we all know that's a lie. So by the way, if you're gonna get a donut, get the best of the best, which is the Polish punch key. Uh, as far as this stuff up here that I'm showing you guys, uh, you can definitely follow along right now with me, uh, even if you don't have these things. But in the long term, if you're serious about uh, proper color grading, then I would say get yourself these uh, tools. Anyways, for now, let's start with the tutorial. You can actually download all the footage that I'm using up here, along with some of the LUTs that I'll be using. Uh, uh, you can just follow the link in the description of this video, which will take you to my website. There you can download all the stuff. And while you're there on my website, uh, don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter if you haven't already, so uh, you're notified again about these kind of videos and different things that I do uh, on my website. And now a word from our sponsor. Uh, Recover It Free uh, is a free data recovery software, just like the name says. Uh, it's a simple way for you to uh, get your files back in case you deleted them by accident, maybe your files became corrupted. You can get the free version for both Windows and Mac. Now there is a limitation. Uh, the free version will only allow you to recover up to 100 megabytes for free. Uh, if you want to recover more than that, then you will need to pay. Uh, the one year license is $39.95. Uh, the lifetime license though is only $10 more, $49.95. Uh, you start up the software and you choose which type of recovery you want to do, uh, whether it's just deleted files, uh, let's say formatted disk recovery, maybe you have a last partition uh, that got corrupted Corrupted, things like that, uh, or even if it was a virus attack. Then you select the drive where you last your files, click scan, and after the scan it's going to show you all the files and partitions uh, that it discovered. You pick which ones you want to recover, and once it's recovered the files you get to preview them, see if there was any, any corruption or if the whole file, for example, was recovered. So Recovered Free works for all kinds of data, uh, such as you know, documents, graphics, you know, image files, video, audio, emails, and, and a whole bunch of other file formats that I can recover. Anyways, if you guys want to find out more or try out the program for yourself, uh, then you can go download Recovery Free uh, from the link in below. So inside of Resolve, this is how it's going to look. Uh, this is in, inside the color module. Uh, if you go to editing, obviously it looks different, but today we're just going to deal with the color module. Um, it shows you up here all the different clips, kind of I'll show you the, the few clips that we're going to be working on. It was the first shot, second, uh, third, and here's one more shot. Uh, you can see a common theme today, girls in bikinis. <laughs> uh, nothing wrong with that. All right, and uh, first thing kind of if you've never worked in Resolve, I'm going to show you how, uh, you know, kind of how you can sort of customize it so it's a bit easier to work with. Since we're only going to be worrying right now, let's say, with, about this shot, we're working on one shot at a time, we can hide this, uh, basically, all these clips here. So you go here, you click this button, and the clips disappear. This gives you more sort of just space to work with. You can make the, here in the main viewer wider. 
Uh, if you wanted to, you can also here like enable, for example, you have LUT folders, media, timeline, so that it shows you the timeline. But again, right now we don't care about anything, but you know, basically being able to see our shot here. And on the right side here, we have our own nodes. Um, and in this shot, uh, it's, um, it's kind of a nice shot that, f let's say you, somebody gave you this shot to color grade and you have no idea what camera it was shot on or what setting or what format. Um, you know, clearly it was shot in some kind of a log format because it's kind of, you know, washed out looking and stuff. Now, if you knew, let's say, if this was shot in, I don't know, V-Log or something, then you could look, for, you know, for a lookup table that you could apply to that to kind of bring it into the right color space. But even if you don't know that, you can quickly kind of do this yourself. So this is how you would do it here. Um, you basically have your here color wheels, you have the lift, which is uh, your shadows, gamma, it's midtones, gain, uh, is the highlights, and offset is just the overall, basically, you offsetting the overall image. So if I grab this, you make overall the whole image blue, you know, purple, green, that kind of stuff. Um, the, here's how you can also grab, you can grab these wheels here and you can kind of just brighten it. So if I take the offset for the whole image, I can, you know, scroll to the right or to the left to make it brighter or darker. Uh, so first probably thing if you want to do is when you're looking at an image, especially a log image, is uh, look at the scopes. So we're going to bring up the scopes up here. You have different ones. You have wave, waveform, parade, vector scope, histogram. Right now we're going to lo just look at the, the waveform. So as you can see, most of the information is here, kind of in the middle, and that's because, of, again, it's, it's a log, you know, profile uh, kind of a shot. So, you know, it's very washed out looking. Um, and then there's a little bit here, you know, on, on the, a little bit off to the center and right, uh, you know, that's this area here where you see all these, um, you know, the highlights there. That you can see it's kind of peaking, almost going all the way to the top. So what we want to do is we, you know, to kind of add contrast is we want to spread out all of this information over the whole scope. So as you can see right now, uh, the best way to do it is you know, don't even touch the highlights because they're already kind of touching there. So just take the shadows and bring them down. So you can do that by, again, going here to the left wheel, which is a lift or shadows, and grabbing here this thing, and you're going to just, you know, click it and move it to the left. And as I'm moving it to the left, again, pay attention to what's happening uh, here, uh, and you can see how the shadows are being dragged down. So again, I'm going to just continue pulling this down, and this is probably the most I want to kind of pull it down. I don't want this to go below zero. Uh, maybe even this is kind of dangerous. I would say like I, I kind of usually go to like this this you know this line here 128, uh, so that you know I don't create these completely clipped blacks, uh, you know, dark parts of the area of the image. You can see if I pull it down past zero, it gets really dark. So yeah, somewhere there. Now what I did is definitely brought the contrast. This is how it looked before. This is how it looks now. So Brad added the contrast to it, but you know she kind of still looks very dark there, right? And the sky overall looks too dark. So uh, what I would want to do is take still most of the information, kind of bring it up a little bit here, so it's sitting in the middle while still having the dark parts of the image, which is like her hair basically and the shadows here on the bottom, have that go go down. So what we're gonna do is take the gamma, which is the midtones, and again kind of pull it up. Now here's where having you know a control surface is going to be really handy because as you can see as I'm pulling the gamma up, look look what happens again. It's obviously affecting this part here because it's all very close to each other. So then I have to go again to lift and kind of pull this back down, right? And it's kind of like this non-stop thing, uh, kind of going you know with the lift gamma and then the gain, and you're going to be kind of playing around. Whereas uh, here, if I reset this whole thing that I just did. If I just take my wheels here, uh, my control surface, I can just simply, you know, very quickly drag the shadows down, take my gamma, pull it up, and while I'm pulling the gamma up, I can keep on crashing the shadows, so you can kind of see what's happening. And I can, in real time, you know, kind of, it's, it almost feels like you're dancing with, the, you know, the whole image. I can kind of really adjust it and make it, you know, look how I want it to look. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of more or less, I think, where, you know, where I would leave this. So. Now I have some of these dark, dark areas reaching almost zero, but still the image overall is in the in the mid tones here, so it's not too dark. And then we have that those uh, you know kind of the, the thunder peaking, almost you know touching the the top of the waveform. Um, so it's looking a lot better now. The next thing it's still missing is obviously color. Uh, if you go here to your vector scope, you're gonna see these are you know your red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellow. 
Uh, and this is kind of what's showing us where the, the colors are. And they're basically, you know, kind of all in the center. If you, for example, were to take the saturation and just drag the saturation to zero, you can see there's nothing here because it basically is showing you how uh, how much color there is in the shot. So what I would want to do is, by the way, any of these settings here in Resolve, you just double click on it and we'll kind of reset it for you. So I would want to actually add, bump that up. Now, if I overdo it, uh, then, you know, if it starts going, for example, like here, you know, this is still, you could say, safe levels, but if it goes past these squares, that's, as it means, it's not video safe a anymore. And it's gonna look just really ugly on, on like a typical, you know, television. So I, I will usually kind of start with, uh, by putting this to like 75%. So somewhere there, and you can see right away, it, again, makes the shot come alive. So, you know, we added contrast, we added some saturation, and again, this is before, this is after. By the way, on your keyboard, you can press uh, Shift D to kind of toggle between, you know, the original image and then uh, having the grade applied. Also, you can press uh, Shift F to make it go full screen. And let me just play this so you guys can see how the shot looks. And uh, uh, anyways, this is how the shot kind of looked before. And this is how, you know, it looks now. So definitely a big difference, but I still think uh, it just kind of looks like video. And I, I want it, I think the shot can look a lot more epic by adding you know this kind of real feel of this sort of a late evening sky where, where the sun the sun and the sky is kind of turning uh you know a, a little bit i would say almost reddish kind of pinkish and that's going to really you know g g come down to really to your taste um so anyway so i'm going to go now and if i'm going to leave this basically but i'm going to create another note uh you can do that by right clicking here and go uh you know add note add a serial note you can also do the same do, do the same thing here by going to color, uh, saying uh, you know going to note, and then you click again add note or click Alt S up here, and it's going to show you. Uh, if you want to add a note before that, uh, the note that we had, then you press uh, Shift S. Anyway, so we have this new note. This new note, if I turn it on and off, as you can see, nothing is happening. Uh, but basically, this note, I want to use it to, like I said, add some color there in the sky. Uh, and so that's where these color wheels again come in really handy because now I can take for example if I just wanted to make the whole image Let's say like I said reddish and I can do that by taking the whole offset and you can see right away to add just kind of a little bit more of a character to this shot now for me, you know, if I, I kind of don't want to make the whole thing look red like this because uh, Then she's really looking kind of strange uh, so her skin tones so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset this uh, and I kind of want to add it more or less here, I, I would say, in the mid-tones. So again, the gamma, I'm going to take the wheel and I'm going to start pulling it to kind of the colors that I want. So if you want to make the sky greenish, again, you can kind of turn it towards greenish or bluish. In my case, I want to pull it towards these kind of reddish colors. Now, as you'll notice, uh, as I'm doing this, it's affecting pretty much, here if I turn on the parade, it's affecting kind of pretty much the whole image. This is kind of the red channel and you can see the whole image left to right. If I move it here, the whole basically shot is going there. Well, what I want to do is I want to take the midtones, but the shadows, like where we see here, you know, here the darker parts of her skin and the hair, I don't really want that to necessarily turn, um, you know, so so red. So that's where, uh, you know, I can take the lift at the same time and start pulling it in, in the opposite color. So kind of here towards the blues. And again, having a control surface at this point is going to be really handy because, as you can see, I kind of have to go one by one. Whereas, uh, again, if I were to uh, just reset this, then as you can see now, I can just go to my control surface and I can move both of these wheels. You can just watch those wheels moving and I can just adjust it and really kind of bring that color to how I want it to be. So there, the sky, like I said, I'm adding a little nice color, but I'm kind of countering the here, the shadows. And I think somewhere there is looking pretty cool. So uh, again, I'm gonna here, just zoom out. And this is our grade here where we you can see, this is how it looked before. This is how it looks now. We're kind of added a little bit more warmth to the sky. And I'm gonna go maybe here, turn the gamma even more towards kind of reddish. And maybe, you know what, I'll even take the, the gain or the highlights here. And I'm also gonna move them here uh, kind of add a little bit there maybe kind of make it feel like that sun is really really hot like really towards the yellows and uh, somewhere there I think it's pretty pretty cool looking uh, and again now I'll just kind of bring this up and play the shot so you guys can see how it looks 
Uh, pretty epic, I think, looking shot, and definitely when you compare it to what we started with, which was um, this. <laughs> Doesn't look as epic, it kind of feels very blunt. Now here's our next shot uh, that I'm going to work on, and it looks pretty good. You know, you can look at the, here the parade, or we want the waveform, and you can kind of see it's uh, overall it's it's a shot that was wasn't shot in log, so because of that, it's it's the information is nicely spread out over the waveform. You know, we have some information there all the way in the highlights, and you know, mo parts of it here. This is like the darks between the bars there; they're going almost completely to zero. So it's nice in that in that respect, but. I, I think where the shot you know can look even nicer is uh, if we kind of just make it a little bit more vibrant. Like I, on purpose, when I was shooting this, I picked this location because these flowers look really nice. But unfortunately, by the time we actually got there to to shoot, uh, they started kind of you know welting a little bit, and and the colors just weren't like especially here these petals that are falling down. You can see the colors of the flowers weren't as vibrant as I really wanted them to be. So in this case, you know, you could just say, well, just bump up the saturation, right? Now, if I do that, then here's what's going to happen. As you can see, I bump it up, and yeah, maybe the flowers here are looking kind of nice, but these ones here, definitely I don't want them to be, you know, looking kind of like they're almost uh, toxic or, uh, you know, uh, radioactive. And the same thing with uh, with the girl here in the, in the shot. So uh, definitely don't want her skin to look like that. So that's where using curves can be really really helpful and i'll kind of just show you how i can work in pretty much doing everything that i want to do on this shot just using curves so i'm going to reset the here the saturation and go to our curves here if, uh, if you're in one of the other settings just click here and here it shows you first the kind of overall curve so you have your uh, everything's kind of linked here you can unlink it and you can for example choose just a red green or blue so let's say if you wanted to add blue to the shot you can just you know adjust the blue uh, curve here. Uh, I'm gonna kind of gang them all together, and this is just gonna basically let me adjust the overall kind of you know all of the channels you could see on the shot. So uh, maybe one thing I'll do is I'll kind of add a little bit more contrast here, like the black there, and then like around the, the strap around her bra, or for example the black there behind the the fence there is maybe not looking as kind of punchy as I would want it to be. So. Maybe I'll you know create a point here on this line and then take just the kind of shadowy areas somewhere there, like this kind of see this grayish area there, and I'm gonna just pull it down. So you see I'm adding a little bit of contrast. Now maybe she's getting a little too dark, so I can add another point here and I can brighten her up a little bit. So that's how you can kind of use the overall here curve to adjust the contrast to the kind of the, the point that you like. So uh, somewhere there, I think very subtle, but again, if you're this is how it looked before, this is how it looks now. So subtle difference, but it's there. It adds a nice little contrast. Now, next thing I'm going to do is, um, like I was saying before, uh, you know, I want to basically add the overall the, the, the saturation, but not to her skin, right? So that's where curves come in really handy, because now uh, I can go basically here, and here where it says custom, and I can choose different types of curves. Uh, and the curve that I'm going to be actually picking right now is uh, Huma versus Saturation, so uh, or Hue versus sa Saturation. So what this basically represents is here you have the different hues uh, or different colors of your shot, and this is the, uh, our curve here. And up and down just simply means that's the saturation, as it says up here, hue versus saturation. Meaning if I want to adjust the saturation of just this particular sort of set of colors or hues, then I can select them. Now I can do that by just clicking anywhere here. Like let's say if I wanted to pick the green here and bump it up, I can do that. Or uh, if I want to really kind of target the colors, then uh, you know I can actually go here and with the color picker I can pick. So let's say I want to actually adjust these greens here. So I'll pick this, and you can see here it creates a point. It's showing me where which kind of hues these are. So it's kind of going a little bit into this yellowish and greenish. Um, I'm going to pick another here color, maybe this one. Uh, so here it's created another point, and definitely here are these flowers. So here it created another point you can see here and here. And uh, you know if I wanted to, I could also click here on her skin, and it's showing me right now her skin is this point here. So if I move this, you can see if I move it up, it increases the, uh, the saturation. If I move it down, it decreases it. So now I'm just pretty much controlling like basically the the colors or the saturation of do of those kind of hue of colors. So that would be her skin. So I actually want to do the reverse. I want to leave this alone, and I want to move all the other points pretty much up. So I'm going to move this up, 
and here definitely these kind of greens I can move them all the way up and I would even uh, here like this for example flower so these are basically the red here where these flowers are and I move this up maybe not as high but somewhere there so because again if I go too much then again they start looking like they're radioactive um, but I'm even going to pretty much move this whole curve like because I, I kind of want see like those nice colors that she has this pattern of this kind of blue uh, and then kind of, you know, these other sort of shades of colors that she has there on her bra. I think that will look a lot nicer if, if I, again, just kind of pump the colors there. The green is definitely come alive now. Now, her lips came, you know, alive a little bit, maybe too much. So maybe I'll pull this point here down a little bit. We'll move the red on this side. Somewhere there. And now, uh, again, I'm going to just show you guys. This is how it, our final shot looks. Uh, and this is how it looked before. So can see before kind of uh, you know just like a standard video shot now we add a little bit of this kind of punchy contrast and really brought these colors out kind of what i really envisioned when i was originally location scouting now here we have a shot where uh, again it was shot in some kind of a log profile so we'll first basically want to add some contrast to it like i did with the first shot and uh, i'm going to do the same thing just kind of again be pulling here the, the shadows and the highlights and the midtones in all these different directions and in this case I actually want to basically take the shadows pull them down so we'll do this here and the same thing with the highlights and here I'm gonna push them all the way up now I definitely don't want this part uh, here in the in the scopes to go completely past because if I do that if I pull up the gain even more and you see I start clipping that then basically what's happening is I'm introducing these kind of white you know blown out uh, hotspots so I kind of want to just put it just there, almost touching the, the top of the, the waveform, but not quite there. And then the shadows, I can I can push them down even more. So take the shadows here and move it, move it down somewhere there. And maybe here now overall, like this side of her face kind of got a little too dark. So I'll take the gamma and kind of bump it up because as you can see most of the here where she is, is kind of a little too low. I want it to be somewhere there in the middle. So I'll pull that up a little bit, and again, as you can see, when I do that, I gotta encounter it with, by pulling the lift again down, because it's pushing it that up. And so that's kind of, and again, this kind of a constant dance you do between adjusting the each each of these, you know, here values on the lift, gamma, and gain. Anyways, anyways, right now I think the contrast is pretty good. We see all the information's kind of nicely spread out over the waveform. Uh, and again, we're gonna go to saturation. I'm gonna just bump it up to 75%. And there, it looks pretty good, right? So now it looks like a proper kind of a video shot. No longer looks like this, you know, flat kind of a lag profile image like, like you saw there. Um, now the next thing maybe I would want to do is in this case, uh, l let's say I want to kind of add, you know, make this kind of a, you know, interesting color grade. So again, I'm going to add uh, uh, another node here. And I kind of want to make these, uh, let's say maybe the, the yeah the, the trees here very green and the sky very blue because it kind of looks almost grayish there. So what I'm going to take is uh, you know take my second note that I have up here, uh, and I'm just going to push actually the um, uh, here the we're going to take the mid tones which is kind of here where the uh, trees are and I'm going to really pull them towards the greens so pull them towards the greens like somewhere there and then the sky which is more or less in the gain area there in the highlights uh that i'm gonna go and bump it up here or actually here in the other uh, direction towards the blue so somewhere there and make the sky nice and blue and as you can see yeah the sky looks nice and blue you know the trees look nice and green maybe you can make it even more green by pulling it up towards the yellows but the girl looks horrible <laughs> she looks definitely like she's uh She's, uh, I don't know, been drinking too much and uh, not feeling too well. Um, so that's where uh, f another little trick that uh, that you, you can do again in various different programs, but I think you can do this and resolve much easier uh, by using uh, what's called um, uh, basically uh, using another node that can kind of composite over the top of it. So there's various different ways that you can do this. I can even just click up here and click Add Node, and here. I'm just going to move it over and just create a corrector uh, node. So I'm just going to create a corrector node. Now, uh, what I want to basically do, do is uh, here you can see this these lines. This is basically showing you this is the original image. And the RGB value is going here, the green here in each of these cor uh, corrector nodes. 
the green up here points is the, the RGB value. So it's connecting RGB there. Whatever we did there, that, that RGB now is being outputted to this point. And this corrector, where we added kind of this vibrant green and blue, is again taking that RGB and pumping it out to the final output. What I want to do now is I want to uh, take and basically isolate just her skin. But right now, her skin is already looking you know, pretty bad and very greenish, basically, greenish kind of bluish. So it would be very difficult, actually, to, uh, to isolate it. Whereas when you look at it in the kind of the previous version, clearly her skin looks much different from the sky and, you know, and, and the trees there. So um, what I can actually do is I can take the RGB value from the previous node before we added this kind of crazy color grade. And I can just click on this here, and I can drag it and plug it into the RGB value on this new co corrector node. So there we have it. And as you can see now, this is where, you know, kind of you get a little preview there. The, basically, it's an exact copy RGB of this. The blue, by the way, here is the, the matte. So if you created something that's transparent, then you can, again, copy the matte or the transparency of this node to another node. But anyways, in this case, we're just copying the RGB. And now what I want to do is I want to basically... What I'm gonna, whatever I'm going to be doing here, I want to. I'm going to basically se separate her, separate the skin, and then I'm going to be combining it together with this node by putting it on top of that node. So basically, replacing this kind of, you know, this this uh, the the part basically where her skin tone is. So I can do that by right clicking and here I'm going to do it here so you guys can see and create a layer. Uh, it's basically mixer, and I'm going to just move this here so it basically joins this part. You can see it's there. So this now goes to this point, and now I can pump the RGB out from this corrector and plug it into here. And you can put you know various multiple layers up here. And the way this kind of works is sort of as if you were in Photoshop. So the first layer, it's basically it's in reverse though. So the top layer is actually on the bottom, you could say. And then the next layer here, and then the next one, next one, if you keep on adding, is whatever you put on the top. So since right now we're putting this on top of that, that means that basically whatever we did here is not visible. As you can see, I can turn it on and off because uh, this thing is 100% opaque, right? So what I actually want to do is I want to create a key just where her skin is. So I can do that by going here to our qualifier, a little drop here. And I'm just going to basically click and kind of click my mouse and drag it and pick, you know, uh, while holding the mouse button down, I'm going to kind of just go all over this kind of her skin tones, make sure I select all those areas. So uh, I'm going to click this and as you can see it's showing me right away what I'm picking because, uh, yeah, because there you can see kind of the, the original image there underneath there. And here I'm going to pick all of these points there. Uh, somewhere like that, I think it's pretty good. Now if you want to, you can actually click here highlight. This is going to show you kind of uh, basically just the area that we picked. Uh, you can switch here also between just looking at the actual colored part or just looking at the kind of the black and white. So you can really clearly see, uh, we're going to zoom out, kind of what we're picking. We picked a little bit here. If you want, you can kind of get picky and start, you know, deselecting that. But to be honest, I'm, I'm not worried that about that part because that part of the image did have some, kind, some of these kind of brownish kind of co colors that are kind of closer to her skin tone. So anyway, so um, it, what I would want to do is maybe is just kind of clean it up a little bit. So uh, again, make sure you're in this note and in the qualifier here settings, you can denoise it. So kind of run this a little bit. It will kind of clean up some of that noise. You can clean up the black areas. So you can see that will hide some of those specks there. Uh, clean up the white areas too. So some of these specks there that are thing are going to start disappearing. So it's just a question of how much you want to do that. Uh, you can also just, you know, overall just kind of blur it. So if you overdo it, it's it's gonna, it's gonna not going to look that good. But you can blur it a little bit, I would say, here in this case. Just a few pixels, because if I don't blur it at all, it kind of looks very sharp. So I'll blur it a few pixels there. And yeah, otherwise I'm pretty happy with it. So I can turn off the highlight, and now you can see what's happening. So basically, we're putting that is basically that part of the image of the girl back on top of this footage. So if I hide this, this is how it looks. She's very green there, and then now her skin tone looks proper. And again, you can now go in and you can kind of tweak this kind of the, the qualifier. So you can do that by, for example, taking this this area. So this is the luminance. So let's say if you want to not include as many of the dark areas, then you could take the dark areas and kind of start cutting them out, or we want to include more of the dark areas, then you can pull it left and right. You can soften it also, right? 
these kind of edges here. So that's kind of how you, you can think. So maybe in this case, you know what, we will try to clean this up. So if you take the here the part with the saturation and see which part is it that, uh, or no, I think it's in the hues here. Yeah, these kind of brownish greenish colors. I'm gonna here. See, I'm gonna take this and, and adjust the width of it. So there, see these areas now disappear. There's still a little bit there. So I can do that, but maybe I'll also soften it here. So you see, this is basically showing me which parts in my qualifier, which, which is basically this area, which parts are, are selected according to hue, saturation, and luminance. So now we have a pretty nice key here. This is basically what we selected. And if I put it up now, so maybe here, there, somewhere there, I'm pretty happy. And again, this is how it looks now where you see we put the color, her skin tone, back in the shot. Uh, and again, this is uh, overall, if you look at the, the whole shot before, after. So it's very vibrant, definitely the sky you know, looks blue, the, the trees look green, and maybe it's almost too vibrant, so it's really, it really just comes down to you and how much you want to kind of adjust these. But, but one good thing is that the, we have the original colors you know, that we have of the girl's skin tones. So, so here we have one more shot. I'm going to kind of show you quickly uh, how you can just kind of, again, add some life to it, add some kind of unique look. Uh, and, uh, and overall, I think the shot, you know, it's nice and bright kind of, you know, uh, definitely doesn't have a lot there in the shadows. So maybe I can just take the lift and kind of pull it down just to add a little bit of their contrast. Maybe, you know, not do it too much because I do want it to, to kind of feel like a, like a hot kind of a summer day. Uh, after all, she is on the beach. But now, uh, you know, in this case, let's just try adding even like some kind of a lookup table a lot. So, you know, maybe you, you got some lookup tables from, you know, bought it somewhere online. Maybe you bought some of mine. <laughs> or if you want, you can actually download some free ones that I have here, actually. You, and, and the cool thing in uh, Resolve is you can just kind of scroll over that lat there thumbnail. Uh, without pressing the, the mouse button, just kind of just scroll over it with the cursor and you can kind of preview the shot, see how it looks. So this is with the Palma uh, LUT. So again, you can these are three LUTs that I give on my website uh, and you get them just by subscribing to my newsletter. And this one, this one looks actually pretty cool, San Diego. If you want to apply the, one of these LUTs here, you basically just double click on them and it will apply it to the, the node that you have selected. And this is our node where we did like this initial kind of, uh, you know, adjustment of the contrast. So I actually would want to have a separate node that just has the LUT applied to it. So I'm going to create a, another serial node here and it's make sure this one's selected. And then I'm going to double click on our LUT here. And that's going to apply it now to this node. So again, if I turn off this node, you can see there's no LUT. And this note is just that little contrast adjustment that we did. it. So it's looking pretty cool. Now one thing maybe I'm kind of looking at it is maybe it's a little like too bold, like the color and everything is too bold from this LUT. And that's another thing that you can do in, in uh, Resolve. You can go here uh, to your key, make sure you have the note se selected where you have the LUT applied. And by basically adjusting the key output, you can uh, essentially tell you know, uh, resolve how strong you want this LUT to be applied. One is basically all the way, the gain. And if I put it to, let's say here to zero, you can see that our color grade disappears. And if I now bump it up, I can just click on it and scroll left and right. If I put it to, let's say 0.5, then it's kind of see halfway there. If I go all the way to one, then it's, you know, making it uh, here it's making it see very saturated, making that lot very strong. So I can maybe kind of pull it down a little bit, maybe apply it to like 86%. And there, I think it's a pretty cool looking shot. So again, this is how it looked before. This is how it looks now, just by applying a lot and kind of just playing around a little bit with the contrast and the, uh, and the, you know, and the, um, and the brightness there. Uh, maybe another thing I can also do now is because we have this note there where we adjusted kind of her you know, the, the shot, the, the, the kind of balance of it. Uh, another thing I can do is I can take our LUT note and I can now quickly preview how it would look, let's say, with my other free LUT that I have up here. So this one actually looks pretty cool too. Uh, again, you guys can get this by signing up to my newsletter. Uh, or if you want to, even better, you can go and on my website and buy, for example, my Cinecolor LUTs, which I have up here. I can kind of preview it, for example, Fun in the Sun. We can see, after all, she's on the beach. Maybe it will look cool. Yeah, it has kind of a cool look. Has, it gives her this kind of a copper tone look to her skin tone. This Oh, this looks cool. Golden grass. Uh, 
or this one even happy split looks even nicer i think it kind of gives you these blue kind of almost metallic colors there in the sky i mean in the in the in the water behind her and uh yeah and then her skin still has that copper tone tone now this golden grass for example yeah, this also could look good i'll double click on it so i applied it now to this node but again i'm just gonna make it like not as strong so i'll pull this back to maybe like 50 percent so somewhere there i think it could look really cool somewhere there around 50 percent so yeah it's a kind of a cool again you know very kind of a you know brownish kind of a golden grass look as, as the lot says uh, but you know what actually i'm gonna apply this one happy split this looks pretty cool there uh, and again you know you can keep on playing around there testing out different lots here's how this shot looks so anyways this video is uh, is going to be the first in a series where i'm going to be showing you guys all these quick sort of tips and tricks uh, of how you can kind of add life and just fix up your shots uh you know uh, but just by using color correction or some basic effects in post-production uh so there's going to be definitely more videos coming up like this if you guys want to be notified again go to my website at tomantosfilms.com subscribe to my newsletter there uh you know you'll get those free lots there and also uh, you'll be notified through email when I put up, you know, other filmmaking tutorials, film gear reviews, and things like that. Uh, and if you want to uh, support me even more, then join me on Patreon. Anyways, if you guys like this video, smash that like button, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!